Hello critters, today we're going to go over a whole bunch of the prints that I've made with the Kickstarter CR6 SE, so stay tuned. So on this past live stream we built the CR6 SE, you're probably saying wait a minute, didn't you already do a CR6 SE? Yes I did, they sent me a review unit a couple months ago. And um, I received one of the earliest ones off Kickstarter. I, I spent my own money and bought one off Kickstarter. I liked it that much. And so I finally got around to building it. <laughs> um, so we built the CR6SE and we started making some prints with it. And of course the first print was the Marvin. So we printed a little Marvin. He's not perfect. He does have a couple little issues. Nothing, no big deal, but you know, it's not perfect. That discoloration is a little bit of the leftover filament that was in the um, the the printer still. So you see, I need to work on my Z seam. I forgot to put the Z seam in the back, and also the keychain was very delicate. I may have been under extruding a little too much. I tend to run my extrusion multiplier pretty low. So next up, we printed the vase. We had a problem with that. That did not come out so good. All those zits. Well, apparently it has a firmware issue. Um, I've seen this before. I believe it was with the GTEC A10. And it also uses the STM 32-bit processor, which I believe is the same thing this one uses. So there is a firmware bug. They came back to me. I, I, this is several years ago. I'm trying to find the details of the contact I made, but they came back and said they found a math error in the firmware. They corrected it, and it stopped doing it. So this has to do with the, I, I believe, the number of direction changes per second. So the rate that it has to make um, direction changes in the firmware when it's doing a continuous Z. So vase mode printing. And um, they made whatever correction they made and it worked perfectly. So they got to figure out what that was and implement that same correction here. Slowing down fixes the problem. So I reprinted the vase slowing down of course and it printed absolutely perfectly I mean I cannot find a flaw in that that came out real nice you know it's really nice when you get that nice glistening see how it looks like um the way the lights hitting the facets as I rotate that's when you know you got a real nice print so then I started printing all the things on the SD card so I just printed everything so I printed the cat and of course the cat came out nice no complaints about the cat you see the the front face here is nice and smooth so we don't have an easy wobble or anything like that and the cat's not decapitated <laughs> and then I printed the little doggy Actually, I think the next thing I printed was the Flexi Rex. So, you got a Flexi Rex and all the links flex. So, no problem with close quarters. And I didn't have to free any of these. I didn't have to sit here and work it. It was free right off the print bed. So, the stringing was under control for the most part. There's these little bits I see here and there. You can actually see some in there. See it there? Like little bits of goop. I think that's a slice setting. Because I have other prints where I don't have that problem. So I will work on that. It could be filament too. But the print, everything works freely. I didn't have to free it. I didn't have to work it. This is how it came right off the bed. So it works good for print in place. Now these two are unusually nice. Um, whoever sliced these for Creality did a good job. So you have the little doggy. And that is a seriously clean print. This is a MakerBot print. It's a MakerBot on the bottom. But this is a seriously, seriously clean print. I mean, that's good. That is almost flawless. In fact, I'm trying to figure out where the zits are. And I can't find them. I'd really like to know how they did that. Uh, I see a little bit right there. A little bit of Z-seam right there. But man, that is well hidden. That's a, I'm going to show you that again. That's a good print. 
just goes to show you print quality has a lot to do with your slicer settings assuming the printer itself is mechanically sound I mean that is good that is really really good the EV also came out really good again very clean print very smooth started to get a little stringing when it started jumping back and forth to do the two ear tips you can see that inside there a little bit of stringing even these points they're actually sharp like you can you could probably poke yourself with that maybe even break the skin I mean it, it's it did a nice job I was, I was surprised by that but almost perfect layer of libet very very smooth did a real nice job on that then I did the little piggy piggy had a little bit of support on the bottom support came out without a problem minimal scarring a little stringy here which I, I'm actually surprised it did this as well as it did I did a nice job on that all your details come out very nice I'm pleased with that I have no complaints it's still printing right now I got a little um let's call it a pornament printing <laughs> a little Christmas PP character to send back to the shop in New Jersey as a Christmas gift for them <laughs> I'm gonna paint it um, this is the pot of greed somebody said this is from Yu-Gi-Oh not sure this actually had a pretty decent amount of support um, these are actually not even attached completely there's actually a gap there and that was all held up by support and it did a good job some scarring I didn't clean these up much beyond just taking my fingers and pulling off all the support and all the fuzz so this could use a little more cleanup you know that's normal when you print with support the details however are fantastic nice job Again, whoever sliced this did a good job the slice is very good then um, I made my own print I found something similar to this did not like it because it required support to print properly so I made my own little Among Us planter so I made sure that the backpack had a little bevel on it so it wasn't a hard overhang and then I also gave the crotch there a proper dome it was flat through here which meant you had a big giant air print and then I also put a bar going across there it's actually a, um, a wedge so that it would start off printing that wedge there so a clean straight bridge and that bridge would be like three layers thick and then it would begin printing the circle so it had something to print the circle on so this whole thing printed without support I also added my typical hex base so that it's actually stable when you sit it down because so otherwise when you fill this with dirt and plant something because that's what it is it's a planter when you fill this with dirt and plant something in it it's just going to tip over <laughs> so now it won't because it has the base to hold it up and basically I just printed this part without top and bottom layers gives it that you know steampunk sci-fi look to it I like that so I'll be posting that to Thingiverse soon you have to use your slicer um, multi-layer settings to um, make the bottom print solid so it should hold water and um, well it's not gonna hold liquid water it'll probably leak but once it's filled with dirt as long as you don't over water it you shouldn't have a problem with leaking but yeah that came out nice I like that a lot and you see very clean I have no complaints about the print quality the little imperfections you see that's actually in the model that's decimations from using Tinkercad now I want to print a real big one <laughs> super size you know the chi rod with the 1.2 millimeter nozzle and just make a big giant one <laughs> even those inside parts there are pretty clean the machine did a good job I have very little to complain about and then I also did a mechanical print to show for um, um, dimensional stability so I printed out a little jar so it's got a screw top lid 
I did not have to clean it. I did not have to work it to make it work. This one actually had a problem because that's the second problem I had with the printer. The um, um, filament run out fail safe kicks in randomly. It'll just pop up on the screen saying filament run out. I just hit resume and it keeps going because the filament didn't run out. So that's being falsely triggered. I usually disable filament run out sensors because they're a pain in the butt. But, um, you know, my filament run out is me looking at the spool going, yeah, there's enough there. <laughs> um, this one, although the filament run out would work with this one because I replaced the glass bed with Wham Bam using their PC polycarbonate um, print surface. So I won't have the problem of, you know, I, I, I turn my bed off at 100 layers. So at 50 to 100 layers, depending on the size of the print, I turn the heat bed off so that I'm not using up that power. And so, you know, doing a... 30 hour print, 100 hour print is no big deal because the printer is only consuming 50 watts or so. It's very little power because the heat bed's off. But yeah, there's the jar. I got some Thingiverse. I will post links down below. There's your Z scene. And then the lid. Oh, the problem was I printed this. Oh, sorry. Ooh. To make sure it had no problem printing um, sequential printing. It had no problem. Did that just fine. It was able to do one, lift up, come over, go down. You know, it came back down to the zero point correctly and began printing without a problem. So it is repeatable. But you got to make sure. I had it set up with this on the front left and this on the back right. Well, the problem is whenever it did that filament runoff thing, it I got lucky and it just barely ran through this part. So it actually um, nicked it. Actually, I think I peeled off that messed up layer. I just tore it off um, but it, it ran straight through this print thankfully it was already at pretty much the top of it so just the tip of the nozzle hit it <laughs> and then it hit it again when it resumed so make sure your first part is over on this side so that if that happens it doesn't collide with the first part but um, yeah came out fine nice and smooth clean layers there's your bottom layer off of the PC sheet and then this threads on without a problem. There you go. Nice and clean, nice and easy. The threads have just that little bit of play, which you should have, which means that you don't have to, you know, dick with adjusting the scale. You know, it has built-in tolerance so that the lid just threads on and stays on fine. So there are the prints. We got the little jar off the Thingiverse. We got the Among Us planter that I made up in Tinkercad. I'll post that later. And the rest of these besides the Marvin came off the SD card and the vase. So you got the EV again. The EV, the dog, and the cat. The cat is a kind of deceptive print because the, um, the non-smooth pattern in the cat would hide any defects. Although I still can't find any defects. This is an excellent print. But even if it wasn't, this pattern would hide it. These are as smooth as a baby's bottom. I mean, just look at the glistening coming off of that. I mean, the EV and the dog, whoever sliced them, I would like that profile. <laughs> I would really, really like the profile used to slice these two prints because whatever magic, black magic you performed in your profile is great. These are just fantastic. Gorgeous, gorgeous prints. Of course, the Flexi Rex, the Pot of Greed, the Vases with the bug from the vase mode and then slowed down, perfect. And of course the piggy and the Marvin. I gotta send this off to George. His, he got the Ender 5 and it has the pig on there but it's corrupt, so I'm gonna send him a working one. <laughs> and there's the Marvin. But there you go. There are the prints that I've made. Oh, I almost forgot one. Forgot two, actually. I printed, I designed and fabbed up a little holder so that I can take the screws out of my wall. <laughs> so I'll just double stick tape this to the wall and my little temperature gauge. So this is my refrigerator, my two deep freezers and the fridge freezer. Actually, this is the soda cooler, the two freezers and the free in the um, the kitchen freezer so that I can monitor their temperatures. And this just slides right in there just like that. So I'll post that to Thingiverse 2. I did it with no bottom layers just to make sure. You know, not to waste time. You know, that saves you. Well, on this print, that doesn't save much time, but it's a habit. 
And I do have one more to get. I have it outside. Let me go grab it. This is actually a really big print. This is a new mount for my electric car charger. The EVSE, the power supply for my electric car. So that really came out nice. This had several pause and resumes in it. Again, no bottom layers. That saved me a lot of time. That took about an hour off the time of the print by just starting off with infill. So this is where the, the J1772 or whatever it is, the, the connector for the electric car plugs into here, locks in place. I would prefer something a little more like this. I don't mind the charger sticking out if it means it can't accidentally fall off. This one, if you, it's got the little hasp here. So that's where the locking lug engages. Well, if that ever doesn't engage, the charger's gonna fall down. It's 125 bucks to replace that handle. <laughs> so I may redesign this with this sticking straight out just to make it a little safer in that regard. But it fits perfectly. My charger goes right in there, sockets in, no problem. And then this is so you can wrap the cord around it. So you can coil your cord up and then hang it on here like this. So your wall would be like that. And so that gives you not only a place to put the connector, but a place to hang your cord. That's real nice. I like that. And that came out beautifully. I printed this in, I want to say 16 hours, 14 hours, 14, 16 hours, something like that. It wasn't that long. It was actually pretty fast. But that came out really nice as well. I just lined up the Z-Seam on the back where I'm not going to see it. Very nice. That's like 75% of the volume, 80% of the print volume of the printer. You know, almost the whole entire X volume. Very nice. That's it. If you have any questions, please, by all means, ask down below. I don't want to show that last print since that might get me a community guideline strike. <laughs> but um, now that I've shown them, I'm going to go screw this into the wall and I'm going to go hang this up in my room. Now I have to design one for all the little transmitters I have throughout the house. So... You guys have a great day, and I will see you next Wednesday.